My name is David MacDougall. I'm, uh, uh, I'm based at the Australian National University in Australia, in Canberra, and um, I'm a filmmaker, sometime writer, and uh, a lot of my focus has been on ethnographic film, although the, the division between ethnographic film and documentary is quite blurred, so I sometimes feel I'm just basically a documentary filmmaker. At other times I focus more on uh, ethnographic films. Well, I'm here in Portland for the What is Documentary Conference, and um, I gave a talk at the first session about uh, what I call documentary as process, and the, the basic idea being that uh, um, some documentaries are made as a kind of um, publication of pre-existing knowledge. They're based on a lot of prior research. Other kinds of documentaries, it's actually a research process in itself. It's um, You're making a film to try to learn more about your subject, to discover something about it. So this is a kind of exploratory kind of documentary filmmaking. And for me, the most exciting and interesting kind, because very often you're, um, what you end up doing is a product of what you learn during the making. And this often shifts you into an entirely different uh, direction, so that uh, it's quite open-ended. Well, one project that I began quite a few years ago now, in 19... 96 really it began um, was an idea to to make a film or several films at um, an elite boys boarding school in northern India this had been the subject that an anthropologist friend of mine was studying and he suggested that I uh, think about making films at the school um, my my primary interest was in the school as a kind of crossing place of people from different backgrounds, how they got on with each other, how they, um, you know, did they make friendships across class lines, across caste lines. Um, but in the process of working on this, I actually became much more interested in something else, which was in the school as a kind of uh, social organism, uh, a kind of micro-society in itself with its own rules, its own rituals, which were distinctive to that institution. And the films ended up really being about the experience of students growing up in this kind of an institution where they had to, you know, learn a whole new game plan, in a sense, from uh, their previous lives, which had been living within a family. Now suddenly they were thrust into an institution where they had to um, make some sort of community with others in a place which was alien to them. How did they go about this? How did they, in a sense, reinvent um, a social life with a group of other kids of the same age? So that was um, the primary focus on the experience of the children, their intellectual lives, their emotional lives, their physical lives in this place. And there was very little in the, in the project about actual schooling. I wasn't so much interested in that. This, of course, then led me to um, looking for a kind of parallel research site, you could say. Um, because I spent five years making films about this particular school. Then I began looking for a totally different type of school, and I found one in South India called the Rishi Valley School, which was progressive, experimental. Um, it was based on the teachings of a famous Indian thinker, Krishnamurti. It was co-educational rather than a traditional boys, all boys school. So it was a very different environment and I made a number of films there over 
several years. Um, but then I realized, okay, these schools are totally different from each other, except that they're, also, they're basically for middle-class Indian children. So I began looking for a third research site and settled on um, a shelter for homeless ch children in uh, Delhi which was also a kind of juvenile detention center. About half the kids were there under a magistrate's order, and they had to spend a certain period of time there. Others were children off the street, children who had been lost, abandoned, somehow ended up in this place. And that, of course, was a complete opposite to the Dune School, the first traditional um, elite uh, boarding school. So these three um, types of institutions formed, you know, interesting parallels and raised interesting questions about um, growing up in different kinds of uh, environments for children. How do how do they cope with um, the kind of independence that that creates? Um, for the children off the streets, you know, how did they, uh, how were they different from the children, for example, in, in the boys' boarding school? Uh, and there are many, many things you could say about that. But um, for one thing, I found that the, the children in the um, shelter were much kinder to each other than the children in the elite boy, boys' boarding school, where there was much more bullying in fact. Um, so that was an interesting discovery. But I think the kids in the, in the shelter were much more aware that all of them had suffered some sort of um, um, difficulties in life. And, you know, they had this sense that uh, um, we've all been through a lot of, of uh, trauma, a lot of it might vary from one child to the next, but by the sheer fact of being there, um, they were um, in some ways damaged, you know, or at least been subjected to really bad treatment. And, um, and the other side of it, of course, was that they had lost their families, most of them, so they didn't have that to fall back on. Um, and they therefore in a way considered the other boys around them as, as their family, as their brothers. So there was that kind of solidarity as well.